Also here, so I just walking through Broadway and I saw this press conference, so I might as well cover it. So this is about restoring homeowner authority and rights. Right. So, Our choice. Our, our choice. Our home. Our choice. Our home. Our choice. Our home. Our choice. Hey. Where are you guys from? I'm media. I'm independent. I'm on Twitter. I'm on social media. Yeah. Our choice. Our home. Our choice. Our home. When you have a son. Our choice. Our home. Our choice. Our choice. Our choice. Our choice. Our choice. Ma'am, madam, madam. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, you the organizer? You the organizer? All right, cool. Oh. beyond reasonable and consequential application, specifically with regards to owners of single and two-family homes. Yes. Yeah. 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 More, so, more so, we feel that this law will create undue burden on everyday New Yorkers who are just trying to make ends meet. Yes. Uh, yeah. A little bit about me. Um, again, my name is Jason. I am a native New Yorker. A Brooklynite, um, Brooklyn boy. <laughs> I, grew, I grew up in Bed Stuy. I'm a graduate of Brooklyn Technical High School. I'm a graduate of City University of New York, Brooklyn College. Um, I'm an Eagle Scout in the Stifford District. <laughs> and, um, as of the last eight years, 
uh, super host, uh, short term rental super host on the Airbnb platform. Yeah. Woo. In 2015, I was challenged with the departure of both uh, my cousin, who uh, shared the responsibilities of the home with me, as well as a uh, tenant who uh, was several months late, uh, several months behind on their rent, and then she got a great job in Turks and Caicos, and he moved to Nicaragua. So, um, thankfully, I was able to, to pivot my, and apply my uh, skills as a project and operations manager to a successful hand at short-term rental on Airbnb. Uh, my concerns with this new law are that, you know, its implementation has been arduous, confusing, uh, unclear, and even in its, in its inception, it feels rushed, it feels reactive, and it lacks consideration for and input from us, the people who it directly affects. Yeah. Worst of all, worst of all, it won't even solve the problems that it's intended to address. Um, you know, I, I originally wanted to talk about when I got up here, like all the different types of people that I've hosted that are not New York City tourists. Like I love tourists, but you know, I've also hosted you know people moving into the city, people moving out of the city, people visiting relatives who live on or near my block doctors and nurses who've come to treat COVID patients at the nearby Interfaith Medical Center where I live. Um, you know, and, and, and I want to talk about Peach's Restaurant where I send everybody to go eat, but um, you'll hear from other hosts that follow me on the economic impact that short-term rentals has on this city, and especially out of our tourism. But at the end of the day, you know, with the rising cost of living in New York City, you know, inflation, skyrocketing property taxes, uh, increased maintenance and operations costs. People depend on this income in order to make ends meet and pay their mortgage. You know? yes. and, and throughout the city, different people for different reasons may not be able to make that income you know, with a long-term lease situation. So you know, the question that, that this new law raises in my mind and the question that I pose to the mayor's office and to the city council, and to the Office of Special Enforcement specifically, is how do they plan to solve the problem of affordable housing by making our houses unaffordable? Yes. So that's my experience you know, with short-term rental, and I'd like to turn over the microphone to our next speaker, our next host and homeowner, Gia Briscoe from Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
was trying to take this away from them. How could you do that to the restaurants? How could you do how did they stop this enough? We need the tourism and like Jason said, most of our people come and there's hotels in our neighborhoods that are like two miles away. They're visiting family, they're coming to see new grandchildren. They want an experience that only homeowners can give them. They cannot find that in the sterile environment of our hotel. Yep. Not yep. saying it doesn't belong and hotels don't, you know, serve a great purpose in the city, but we're not doing anything to them. We're 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 doing what we can for our city. We're taxpayers, we're homeowners. All we do is we want to do the right thing. We want to contribute to our city. Well, yep. it's yep. our city. Yeah. And our elected officials that we put there are trying to take that down. Right. Yeah. They need to listen to us. We are the New Yorkers who are going to be here long after most of them are gone. Okay? That's right. We're not going anywhere. That's what they need to know. Now, we got so angry and, and frustrated over this that we decided, along with other hosts, to bring a lawsuit against New York City. We didn't want it to go. My name is Amy Thrasher. I live in beautiful Astoria, Queens. I have been a super host uh, all of my seven years with Airbnb. And um, I want to tell you, my guests love my property. They love the area. And to lose this is just awful. Uh, I've lived in the city for more than 40 years, and sharing my home on Airbnb is what allows me to stay in the city. I testified in person in front of city council when they were considering the bill. I joined the hearings when the Office of Special Enforcement was designing the rules to implement the law. Throughout this nearly two-year process, I have been ignored again and again by our leaders. As I told my local city council member, I love New York, but New York is not loving me back. Yeah. Yeah. Short-term rentals encourage tourism in the outer boroughs yes. and yep. bring income not only to the local businesses. My guests shop at the supermarket, they go yep. to the restaurants, exactly. but also they use the transit system, they come into Manhattan, they're tourists. I see receipts. They spend money. Yep. Our elected officials embracing us hosts, but instead they're tearing us down with burdensome, unnecessary regulations. Now, the, sh the space I share, I have a two-family home with a ground-level apartment. It has never been on the market as a rental unit, not even before I bought the house. It was always occupied by family. So I'm not taking anything away from housing. Um, I am a retiree. And I discovered when I retired, I did not plan very well for my retirement. And um, this Airbnb is what is allowing me to stay in my home. 
and I'm just trying to scrape by. I'm not getting rich. I'm just paying my bills. And the city is trying to take that away from me. This is a dire situation. For me, it is devastating. I can't live off my social security pension. Without my hosting income, I will not be able to pay my mortgage, and I will either lose my home or have to sell it and move. And I don't want to move. Thank you. I know I'm not the only one standing here today in this position. There are people out there across the five boroughs who are facing the same thing. This law is bad. It needs to be repealed or at the very least <coughs> amended. What they're doing is punishing us. Why? Why are they punishing us for just for trying to live in the most expensive city in the world? Yes. The city can't continue to ignore us. Seniors, teachers, mothers, and other hardworking New Yorkers who need this income. They must listen to us now. City officials, hear us. Listen to us. Stop this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, for your passionate, passionate account. Um, I want to thank everyone again for bearing with all of us in this heat. Um, I'm feeling it too. Next up, we have Will Gomez from Queens. short-term uh, rental homes in Queens. I live with my wife and my sister, and we have been sharing our space in our primary home on Airbnb for the last few years. <clears throat> I have lived in New York since 2004, the year that I moved to this amazing, amazing city from a native Colombia in South America. And every year it has gotten increasingly more expensive right. to survive and keep up with our bills. Yeah. Around a year ago, I was forced to leave my job as my employer did not respect the seniority I had and did not grant an FMLA federal protection for medical treatment for medical treatment I needed. And so today, I'm still waiting on help and answer. From the local union, I have been supporting and paying right. for the last 15 years of my life. The problem with this law, we have to call it the right way. It's bad law. That's it. It's bad law. It goes against the free use of everyday New Yorkers' own private property. Yeah. Yeah. Local 18 not only attacks our city and state's middle class, but it also attacks the principles of the economy of the United States of America. Yeah. The U.S. stands for free markets, yep. free economy, and the right to private property. Yeah. 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 This last one is only the natural right of all individuals to create, obtain, and control their possessions, beliefs, faculties, and opinions, as well as the fruits of their labor. This new law goes against this fundamental principle to every American New York. It is a problem to me to hear the guy who wrote this bad law. His name is Ben Kalos. Remember that name, Ben Kalos. He was the person who started this nonsensical local law, openly state, and he openly states in public channels that if he will be a small owner, he will not be scared as this is the only, it's only designed to, for illegal rental, which is not right. In fact, one of the biggest problems of local law is that the person who wrote the law and the elected officials who supported did not even read the writing of such a law and the full extent of it as the final writing 
only puts middle class and small home owning New Yorkers at a big disadvantage and not only attack, attacks the right to private property, but their own privacy as well as putting their economy in jeopardy. Yeah. 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 I don't want to say myself too much because I will be here all day. But lastly, I want to thank Airbnb for this space. Now for being Airbnb similar sharing home sharing platform, for being a blessing to our family, I I would like also to uh, take this opportunity to thank ROAR, which stands for Restored Homeowner Right Authority. Bringing us together and the 40,000 plus hosts and their families in New York City and their families and friends that support our cause. I would like also to take a moment to speak to Major Eddie Gaddy and hope he understands that this law trends to choke out middle class homeowners like my sister and I and my little dog in the too. <laughs> We're simply trying to pay our bills and put food on the table. We are not big landlords or illegal operators. Right. Right. We voted for you based on the ideals you presented during your campaign. Ideals that we believe in and ideals we voted for. We're 40,000 plus people. Remember that number, 40,000 plus. And our families. So we hope that you listen to us just the way we listen to your campaign and gave you our right. vote. Thank you. Thank you.
nesters or see what this who are is using their homes in this way. Yeah. Um, I know all of you are out here because you feel strongly about this, but unfortunately we don't have time to hear from everyone. I'm going to call up one last person, Tony Lindsay from Brooklyn, for closing remarks. Tony! Yeah. First, I want to thank everybody for coming out here, especially everyone from War. Woo! You know, yeah. We started off as an idea that was in a Facebook group, and we all decided to take some form of action. Now, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I live in East New York, Brooklyn. I think it's very important that all of us, we, we, we provide a diverse range of, of honest experiences. And the reason why I'm here today is because, once again, we have a local government policy that is touted as being for the protection of the, of the people, but is disproportionately having a direct harmful effect on working, hardworking, right. poor homeowners in this city. Like, we're literally poor right now because the cost of living is just absolutely ridiculous here. Now, these, these we've seen it time and time again. We've seen policies, we've seen restrictions that are supposed to hold bad actors accountable. But for some reason, the only people who seem to get the brunt of all of the enforcement are the people like these people standing behind me who are homeowners who have a vested interest in this city. Right. These are the people. Yeah. This is our home. Yeah. Our community. Now, we, we literally built this community. Now, I know I can't be up here long, but I do want, want to say my, I'm the, 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 the child of immigrants. My parents immigrated to this country. They came to this country in the 1960s looking for a better life. They worked hard. They, they bought their first home, the home that I live in, and when they were ready to retire, I bought that home from them, Not, not be, and they didn't want the money from me, but I bought that home from them just so that they could, they could experience the American dream that they yeah. dreamed of. And so I could also have a property where I can hand down my family home to my children. But that dream is being threatened now due to this policy and these heavy restrictions that have snatched away the lifelines that many of us have taken advantage of just to be able to survive in this city. And I know everyone likes to be polite and no one wants to offend, but I am one of those people in this city who was greatly harmed from the, the, the impact of the policies that like the rent, the eviction moratorium that allowed a lot of bad actors to get away with squatting in our homes yeah. for free, for years. And it provided no safety net for the homeowners who are standing here behind us. And a lot of these homeowners, the reason why they, they even started Airbnb was in order to save themselves from all the money that they were losing from these tenants. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I know I'm here for a while, but I, I'm just so upset about it because I, I can relate to all the stories. We have elderly people who are trying to supplement their social security income. Yep. You have families who when they go away on vacation, just to cover the bills, they may want to share their home. So we know who the bad actors, and we've seen them time and time again on television from our mayor and the previous administration where they call these bad actors out. And these people were the developers, these yeah. real estate yeah. investors yeah. Yeah. who yeah. continued to, to abuse the system. Yeah. And never once did I see a one or two family homeowner in any being called out as any of the culprits in this situation. So there's no excuse because this policy right here, it is wicked, it is hostile, and it is completely unfair. Leave us alone. Refreshments in this heat, and uh, stay tuned for for development on uh, updates with this law. Thank you very much.